Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Paragon Guide. I am Silfin. In this video, we are doing exactly what you all have been waiting for. Damage versus attack speed versus crit. What is the math behind it? What is the optimum ratio for each of our fighters and rangers in terms of getting the most DPS? If you are interested in that, that is what this video is about. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Here is the math. Simply, guys, it's quite complicated, so we will cut right to the chase. Damage versus attack speed versus crit. Crit is going to have that 100% bonus, so keep that in mind. You're going to have that 100% bonus to deal 250% total additional damage when you crit. I have all of the... Uh, fighters with Rampage and Severog as well thrown in here. All of their stats that we need to calculate their DPS. When you throw in all of their stats here at level 15, this is the DPS numbers that is computed from certain levels of CP of damage on this side and crit on this side. So 10 CP of crit is 40, 10 CP of damage is 60. So once you run the numbers here, you can get, you know, a good idea of, of a build. 25 CP of, of, of crit and 25 CP of damage, for example, here with Greystone at level 15 gives you 416 DPS. That is, in fact, the highest DPS for 50 total CP, because if you, if you go along here in any other combination, it actually starts lowering the DPS, as you can see. So, Greystone here has a one-to-one -one ratio in terms of crit and damage. Now, if we go down here, it's the same thing except with attack speed. So we can go 25 CP into attack speed, 25 into damage if you were going in only attack speed build. And you can see here, 377. DPS and we can see that actually if you try to go more damage it actually reduces your DPS so now we know here that Greystone is a one to one to one damage crit attack speed we come down here I have a fancy little thing here that uh, get that gives me a, a, a ratio of, of you know 17 damage, 17 attack speed, 17 crit, and it throws in that damage already and then it and then we simply have to go 17 crit 17 attack speed, 506 total DPS in a balanced build, 17 damage, 17 attack speed, 17 crit. Can we confirm that this is the highest DPS? Actually, one more crit, one more, uh, or one more crit, one less attack speed to give us 507 DPS, pretty much bang on. 17, 18, 16 for Greystone here. That gives us the highest DPS. I do this process for every hero and I end up with a whole bunch of ratios here, this blob that I'm going to share with you right now. And as you can see, we have Crunch through Twin Blast, all of the fighters minus Richter and Steel. They just aren't, they're really good support tanks, so I chose to not include them in here as I don't think anybody is going to really be building much damage with them. So, as you can see, here are the heroes, and here are the optimum ratios for these heroes. Um, but as you see, as you saw with Greystone, we were like one DPS off. I'm not going to worry about that. And some interesting things emerge from the ratios here. Uh, I'll, I, well, we'll talk about that, that down here in the trends, but for this, if you want to understand this here, uh, this is what, at what CP of damage do you start going into crit versus attack speed so crit here this is at how many CP you need into damage first in order for crit uh, on top of that to actually increase your DPS and some interesting things emerge here is attack speed and here is the balanced build of how, uh, this is the DPS that these balanced builds produce for these heroes given this much CP into damage, attack speed, and crit. It does not include the 5 CP crit bonus though, so you have to add that on top of these CP numbers. So for example, Sparrow, Twin Blast, Murdoch, and Grim were putting 50 CP into damage, attack speed, and crit, plus an additional 5 for that crit bonus, brings us to 55, maybe 6 or 7 on top of that with fully upgraded bonuses for some lifesteal. Mm. 
perfect. Here we see Quang Kalari. I chose to do that 50 CP uh, just because Quang, the lifesteal can really help him. So if you build more damage, kind of amplify that effect. And here are the other fighters I chose to go for. 45 CP, but it's up to you really. Here is Rampage and Severog, a little bit more tanky, only 40 CP into, into, into damage just because they do work very well. There you guys go. Uh, if you are if you if you are doing different CP amounts for your build, follow the ratio here pretty much to the T. It's not really gonna change that much, minus plus or minus some CP, so follow those ratios. Now, let's talk about some trends here that we see trend one we saw right off the bat there in, in in the math all crit or all attack speed builds are simply not viable anymore you can't do them they lose 100 dps or more from your from, from from your hero so you can't do it anymore all attack speed all crit it's not viable you are hurting yourself you're hurting your team the math says balanced build you have to go crit and attack speed of course with that crit bonus as well fighters and clary are interestingly enough a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio for damage so you know one damage to one lifesteal to one crit 15 15 15 as as you saw here 10 10 10 12 12 12 whatever you want to do to add up to however much cp you want they're a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one. however it's up to you to decide if you want to be more bursty or not. Build more damage instead of attack speed, uh, especially for heroes like Crunch, even Kalari, obviously. You have to decide if you want to be more bursty. Do you do you offload all of that damage that, you, that should come from attack speed, but put it onto damage so that those first initial burst of damage, burst of abilities is more, and then you just hit slower and but for more and it kind of works out do, 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 do you get what i mean you have to choose if you whether you want to be bursty or not especially for these heroes that really work well for burst especially even chimera you have to kind of choose do i want to be bursty put a lot of dp a lot a lot of cp into my damage so th those abilities do a lot of damage but then I won't have very much attack speed that really helps with sustained DPS. That is up to you to decide. I, for example, with Crunch, would probably go something more like 20, 10, 15. I would probably do something more like that, 20, 10, 15 for, for Crunch, just because his cooldowns are already so quick. His, his, his abilities are gonna, or his basic attacks would be quick, etc. Kalari, much the same. I would choose to go more damage then a little bit less attack speed than what this says. But it's up for you to decide. Up for you to decide. Trend three, there's two camps for rangers. If you maybe haven't even noticed already, those that gain attack speed per level don't need as much attack speed. Very quickly, if we go over here, we can see that Sparrow and Twin Blast don't gain any attack speed when they level up. They don't get it. They don't gain attack speed. Whereas Grim and Murdoch get a whopping 2.8% attack speed per level. So the Twin Blast and Sparrow, as you can see, are, are a little bit different. Their, their ratio is four, three, 4 to 3 to 3. Four, attack sp 4 damage, 3 attack speed, 3 crit. 20, 15, 20 if, or 15, 20, 15, 15, pardon me, if you want 50. Now, Grim and Murdoch are different. Because they gain that attack speed, they don't need as much attack speed, interestingly enough, and the math says that. 19, 12, 19, if you're going for 50 CP total, not as much attack speed as Sparrow and, and, and Twin Blast, but more crit. Because you're attacking more, the crit has a more chance to apply, you know, quicker or more often over a short period of time. So very interesting there. They are a weird 19-12-19 uh, ratio here for Grim and Murdoch, where Sparrow and Twin Blast, nice and easy, 4-3-3 or 20-15-15 at 50 CP. Very interesting for those rangers dealing a ton of damage. Look at this. 664 DPS, 651 for Grim. Imagine if you threw on a Traitor's Touch. Oh my goodness. Uh, Sparrow, Twin Blast, a little bit less, but they, Twin Blast, very elusive. And Sparrow, this doesn't take into account her passive. So I just want to point that out. Her passive can skyrocket with this. So 
be careful. Trend four, at least the first six CP should go into damage no matter the hero, no matter the hero. As if we can take a look here, you can see that the first six CP or so really doesn't matter how, you know, it really doesn't matter. So crit is going to be very chancy. Don't go for that, just go for damage, much, much more reliable. Go for damage for the first six to nine CP right in here. And then as you can see here, you can start to either choose whether you want crit to increase your DPS. But I would argue that at this point, two DPS, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Go damage as far as you can and then, and then cut into crit then do it there because it's going to be much more reliable in the early game and just much more reliable overall. Trend 5, DPS has almost doubled since Legacy. So Lifesteal and other damage-oriented cards should be considered. Please consider them. Lifesteal is a monstrous. Please go check out my health versus lifesteal versus health regen video if you want to see the math on that. Lifesteal is crazy, especially for these rangers and actually anybody anybody that's on this list here it's amazing it is amazing so please consider that there you guys go i'll leave this here pause the video take a look at these ratios here again if you want to put more cp into damage if you want to put less i would still recommend doing the uh or the ratios here yes the ratio does change depending on how much cp you put in it does change. There is kind of a weird um, logarithmic sort of relationship that happens with, with these things. So the ratios do change, but not that much. Don't worry about it. If you're only going 40, maybe even 35 CP into damage for some of these heroes, don't worry about it. Still do this ratio. There you guys have it. What do you guys think of some beast beast math here to, to, to kind of show us how much damage we need how much attack speed we need how much crit we need people underestimate attack speed and that is what i found so please please this is what the math says this is correct please like this video if you like it dislike if it dislike it share it with the community so many people can learn i still see people running all crit builds all attack speed builds and they just hurt they hurt you they hurt your team this is what the math says they epic would not make a system where one stat is useless okay in legacy that was the case but they fixed it so there you guys go please subscribe if you found this useful and and if you simply enjoyed the content till next time like always stay optimistic and positive <laughs>